So this is our lesson summary, just a summary, and this is for educational purposes only. So we spoke about using examples, evaluate the possible impact of effective and less effective case with the vision on the service provider for users and professional development of a counselor. So case with the vision provides an opportunity for the staff to reflect and review their practice, discuss individual cases in depth, change and modify their practice and identify training and continual professional development needs. So just to sort of reiterate what might a practitioner talk about at supervision. So first we talked about normative and that involves issues connected to professional and ethical guidelines. So norms, law, standards of practice and competence. For example, there might be discussion about data protection. Two, formative. That involves theoretical knowledge, for example, the teaching of a stress management technique or a new protocol within the remit of the um, practitioner. And three is restorative, involves recharging batteries, this identification from the emotional charge of client work or managing life crisis while still uh, working. So that could be a discussion about the impact of trauma work on the practitioner, if that was appropriate and applicable. So we spoke uh, in the previous uh, lesson uh, very briefly about the seven I model of supervision, uh, which was by Hawkins and Showhead and mode one, the client and their presentation. Uh, mode two, exploration of supervision or supervisee interventions. Uh, mode three, exploration of the supervisee and the client, uh, mode four. Uh, mode four, we talked about um, uh, briefly the focus on the supervisee. Mode five, focus on the supervisory relationship. Mode six, focus on the supervisor and their own process. Mode seven, we uh, explored and talked about the focus on the wider context in which the work occurs. So you can take a moment to sort of briefly think about what you think the impact of good supervision would be. So take a moment and if you've got a pen and paper handy, feel free to write it down. And feel free to write down to take a mental note of an example of uh, peer supervision that's helped you. It's helped you develop your client work. It's impacted your personal development. So take a moment if you can't think of a moment now, you come back to it and think about a situation where you had a good supervision and the impact it had on you. So when we think of person centered supervision, the aim is to work with the internal process of the counsellor, their feelings and attitudes, which might interfere with their ability to fully present with their clients. So it aims to work with the relationship co-created the, between the supervisor and supervisee a supervisory relationship based on um, person-centered principles, which is, we've talked about person-centered supervision. But we talked about um, identifying effective ones, expected supervisions that you may have experienced. Now you can maybe identify some less effective supervisions that you might have had. And you might write down or make a mental note or come back to it later identify how these experiences uh, have impacted you, possibly impacted your clients and your development as a counselor or psychotherapist. So have a moment to jot that down or uh, make a mental note. So if we reflect on bad supervision, so the supervisor will discourage the counselor to explore feelings according to the standards of supervision presented, maybe potentially negatively affect the counselor's personal development. So it's really important to um, encourage the counselor psychotherapist to explore um, feelings uh, rather than shut them down. Um, that's quite useful really, because you can sort of uh, explore and, 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 you know, for example, counter transference. So an example, the counselor might want support or the psychotherapist in supervision after experiencing counter-transference. Where counter-transference is um, what the counselor psychotherapist uh, feels. So some, they might have a client that reminds them of 
someone in their family and it stirs something up emotionally. Um, it could remind them of a parent, a sister or a sibling or child. And so it's for easy, honest communication with counselor that leads to positive outcomes you would hope for both the counselor's development and the client's welfare. So the counselor might, well, the counselor has to be honest, the psychotherapist, about how he or she felt instead of being worried about what supervisor uh, might think of him or her. The vision should be supported or support the counselor psychotherapist facing an emotional dilemma in the same way that the counselor in some respects supports the clients in expressing their feelings. So before the start of supervision, the counselor and supervisor should agree on a contract, uh, which will include duration, number of sessions, fees, and that's according to the uh, BACP 220. It's always useful um, to, you know, to, to have that sort of contract in the beginning. Um, whilst the supervisee are expected to be honest about their difficulties, um, like with the client, the supervisor should not make the counsellor feel uh, guilty or unjustifiably judged by the information disclosed uh, by the latter, that's according to the BACP 218. Um, it's okay, the, 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 the counsellor psychotherapist might sort of talk about some sort of feeling of transference and, and it's really important that the supervisor um, doesn't make the um, counsel psychotherapist feel sort of guilty or, or feel judged about sort of disclosing that uh, or those feelings. The counselor's response to the exploration of these feelings will determine the best course of action. The counselor's response uh, to the elaboration of these feelings will determine um, a course of action that will lead to the counselor's improved self-awareness and potentially prevent any sort of uh, damaging relationships with the client. So from the context of professional development of the counsellor, the supervisor's role is to recognise feelings experienced by the counsellor, not, you know, harmful in a sense and not unusual. So, for example, um, you know, there is that counter-transference. Um, the psychotherapist counsellor is, is, is counter-transference with a, um, a client. And, okay, well, it's normal to get counter-transference. It's, it's obviously sort of discussing that and sort of, looking at the way forward in terms of, um, you know, how to move forward on that. Because the supervisor has to remind the counselor that the inability to understand such feelings um, or, or, or act on feelings. So for example, um, the, the psychotherapist or counselor built a, a bond or a connection with the uh, client and, 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 you know, they sort of uh, maybe talked about uh, you know, meeting up as, as, as a friend or something outside the, um, the realms of, of, of sort of practice, then that could lead to its own problems. Um, so in, in the circumstances in which the supervisor struggles to uh, help the counsellor, for example, um, the supervisor would be then expected to act responsibly in the supervision duties. Um, and that's according to the BACP 218. This might result in supervisor referring the counsellor to another uh, supervisor. So it might be okay. Well, you know, um, it might be an idea for the council the psychotherapist to sort of see uh, supervision elsewhere uh, in certain circumstances if the supervisor, you know, can't sort of help the council psychotherapist move forward. The BACP 218 suggests that the counselor must not engage or behave um, in, in, in ways that clients. Um, the council of clients is, is, is so in, in not engaged in, in, in certain, for example, the, the BACV sort of stipulates that, you know, um, engage in, stipulates that the council shouldn't engage in, in um, or should have these sort of clear boundaries. So for one of a better word, you know, for example, the, the council shouldn't pursue a personal relationship uh, with a client as this would result putting the client at risk, obviously the client's vulnerable and the client's trust in profession, um, you know, could be lost uh, affecting the therapeutic relationship. So if so feelings like that came up, then obviously you'd sort of want a supervisor to speak to the sort of counsellor about that and not sort of judge the counsellor psychotherapist, not dismiss the sort of counsellor psychotherapist, but just talk about it and be aware of it and sort of, you know, think of a, a way to move forward. Um, you know, ideally, um, they can sort of move forward 
but there might be a case, for example, so that, for example, the counselor psychotherapist hasn't acted on feelings they might have uh, for a client, you know, personal relationship feelings type thing. And a supervisor could suggest to the counselor to refer the client to another counselor psychotherapist. The client might be able to continue the therapeutic work with someone else and the supervisor should support the counselor or the psychotherapist in hand and the client to uh, another counselor psychotherapist if, if those feelings um, you know, the counselor hasn't acted on them, but they're sort of struggling with those feelings to sort of, you know, put them to one side. So um, that would be, for example, you know, good supervision in one sense. And that's one of, you know, several examples we've talked about. But develop understanding of the theory. I think it's really important for professional development point of view um, to develop understanding of theory as it applies to client work. So supervising can sort of help supervisee do that. Um, so if they're using PCT, be able to sort of talk about and discuss how they've used the model. Um, awareness, for example, the counsellor, psychotherapist, if they're using the model of PCT, awareness of understanding concepts of, say, conditions of worth, stages of process, internal and external life evaluation, uh, responding empathically, becoming more self-aware, client making disclosures, managing boundaries of the counselling relationship, and hold any subjective feelings in uh, own experience to one side and reflect on them in the counselor's own time when it's appropriate. The professional development, for example, could be useful. So the use of psychometrics we talked about before in sort of previous um, uh, lessons. So it could be, for example, understanding and, and sort of learning about, you know, Core 10, GAD 7, which generally aren't a part of PCT, for example, approach, um, but might be a requirement of the organisation that the counsellor or trainee is working for. So supervision might sort of um, involve, um, you know, feelings for someone, for example, who is like working for an organisation and, you know, they, they're sort of, they're not quite sure or they feel a bit reluctant to use psychometric measures um, because they feel that it's kind of, counterintuitive around PCT approach. Um, but the supervisor can help the counselor psychotherapist slowly reflect on that. And in turn, that will improve the service uh, by the clients, which is what, what obviously um, you know, the goal is to be the best you can be. So we talked about some useful, you know, good supervisions. Now we can talk about less effective supervision. And less effective supervision might be a case of not challenging the counsellor to reflect on this manner or the manners that we've discussed uh, previously because uh, that would that would run the risk of not ensuring um, uh, the best of the training or the counsellor's ability so the service provided uh, could potentially um, you know not not be safe and, and appropriate because if the supervisor suppresses or judges the counsellor the psychotherapist sort of um, wanted to speak about how they feel um, then that's not a good thing. So case of the vision can assist the counsellor understand the responsibility um, is on the um, you know, counsellor or trainee counsellor to reflect on their own work and prioritise what they feel they need to bring to a vision to make the best out of that time. So effective case of the vision often relies on the trainee uh, or the counsellor's self-awareness and willingness to be congruent it's really important they're congruent, not only within the therapeutic relationship with their clients, but in the relationship with the um, supervisor uh, also. So this is, this is a summary um, of what we sort of talked about. They're not exhaustive, and perhaps you can think of, you know, certain experiences yourself uh, and, and log them down and, you know, where it's been effective and, and not as effective um, casework supervision.